morning and welcome to Barbara Strategy. This is the Colonel's Election Morning Report. This is the first edition of this. I'm gonna try something totally new. I decided to not really script things and not necessarily edit or not edit too much. I can't resist editing, editing a little bit, but what I thought I'd do is I'd give you five points, four or five points every day until election day. This day is T minus 25. So there's 25 more days to November 3rd. So remember, we've got to win and get our champion, Donald Trump, reelected. Okay? So whether you're, I don't care if you're Republican or even Democrat, communist, you got to vote for Donald Trump. So today I have five points for you, real short. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of preamble to this stuff. So, because I said I'm doing it off the fly, I am doing it completely, almost unscripted. Maybe, a little, maybe a little bit of scripting. Uh, number one, the first point I wanted to make, and that this is not about election at all. So we're going to start this election report with a non-election thing. But a game that's coming out, and this is for my gaming side of this BitChute YouTube show for Barbara Strategy. And that is, there's a game called Pax Premier. And my cousin talked me into getting this, into bidding on it, or rather backing it on Kickstarter. And I just got word today that it's supposed to be here either at the end of this week, which tomorrow, uh, or rather today, is the end of the week, or most likely next week. But Pax Premier, it's gonna be a really cool game. It's got some cool playing pieces. And let me say something about that. And that is that, that I, I have to admit, I choose my games in accordance with the quality of the materials in, in the game. I, I, and of course, it has to have some reliable, substantiated, and noteworthy promotion from, from Board Game Geek, which is a website. It's a great website for board games, in case you didn't already know it. Anyway, this is a game that I'll be showing you. I'll be sure. I'll be premiering it whenever it comes, and I'll, I'll even do it on packaging. But I'm, I'm really excited about it, as you can tell. So let's move on to number two. The second thing I wanted to say is that my prediction is that there won't be any deal on the airlines. Now, I've been following the airlines very carefully on whether they're going to get bailed out or not bailed out. Nancy Pelosi, I think, faked them out by saying, that, oh, don't lay anybody off just yet. Uh, just hold on. We're going to we're going to take this up in Congress again, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to try to do a standalone bill for the airlines so that uh, 50,000 people aren't laid off. They're supposed to be laid off on October 1st, but they weren't. They were delayed that. But the airlines have said, hey, y'all have got to make a deal on this. I predict that there will, no, there will not be a deal at all. I don't think that Nancy is willing to play ball. I mean, the bottom line here is what Nancy wants to do is she wants, along with the other Democrats, the Marxists, they want to bankrupt the country. I don't see a deal coming down the line. I've, I've got American Airlines stock, so I'm hoping that the stock will come up if they do a deal. But then again, if they lay the people off, which is a very bad thing, the balance sheets will look good and the stock will come up. So either way, the shareholders win. But on the other hand, the airline industry, and another thing about the airline industry, and that is the president of American Airlines said today that if they lay people off, they can lay off the clerks and the stewardesses and so forth and so on, the baggage handlers. But when it comes to laying off the pilots, that's, that's a very tricky deal because they said it could take anywhere from 12 months to 15 months to bring back these pilots. They just don't it's not a light switch, he says. You can't just turn it on and turn it off. You can't just lay everybody off and bring them back in. I mean, if the business comes back, if Trump's V economy comes back, like I believe it will, the president believes it will, you've got to have these pilots in place because there's a long process to get these pilots back in. These pilots don't go home and just sit and watch Netflix like a lot of people. They are out flying. They're going to fly for somebody. And if they're going to break their contract with somebody else to come back to American or Delta or United or whoever's laid them off, then they've got to have a lot of time for that to take place. So it's better if we are going to have a V-shaped economy for Congress to go ahead and pass a bill and keep everybody in place. It keeps the economy smooth. But see, the Democrats don't want to do that. The Democrats want to destroy this economy. We all know that. So I predict, just 
number two here, I predict that Nancy is going to say no deal because she's already said, hey, come back here, we'll do a deal. And then she said, and we want to do this. And we want to do what they want to do is they want to finance these Democrat blue cities, these big cities that have allowed themselves to get burned up by the domestic terrorists, the protesters, they call them, but they're not. They're domestic terrorists. Black Lives Matter is a domestic terrorist. The Antifa people are domestic terrorists. And that's all they want to do. They want to, they want to fund these cities. They want to get money in and then move the money back to the DNC. And Donald Trump knows this. The Republicans know it. And they're not going to do that kind of a deal. But they can do a standalone deal for the airlines and for different industries. And also, like President Trump wants to do, is send everybody $2,500 or twenty was it? Is it $1,200? $1,200. More on that on another update. Let's go to number three. Number three is I want to talk about a little bit about the debate last night. Last night was the vice presidential debate between Vice President Pence and the whore, uh, better known as Kamala Harris. But I call her the whore. That's because that's what she did. She slept her way to the top and she was so irritating. It's a good thing that those screens were there. You know, at first I looked at it, I said, that's ridiculous. But then after they got into the debate and I saw Kamala and her snide, no, oh, oh, she was just so irritating. Those screens were, you think that those screens were there to keep the corona off of each other. But that's not the case either because see, there is no real corona. Okay, but let's not get into that because right? I've got a lot of films on that. The screens were there to keep Mike Pence from smashing her face in because that's what I would have done. That's what I would have done if I had been sitting there because I would not have been able to resist it. The smirky little smile and and she, she says, oh, I'm talking. It's almost like she's saying the grown-ups are talking. I just wanted to smack her. And anyway, those screens served a purpose, obviously. But the debate went well. Mike Pence mopped the floor up with a whore. And last week's debate, I didn't get to comment on last week's debate, but last week's debate was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. A lot of Americans said that they didn't like the bickering back and forth and back and forth. No, no I loved it. I, the only thing I wanted is from uh, Chris Wallace. I always call him Mike Wallace because I actually liked his dad more than, than him. But Chris Wallace wouldn't shut up. If Chris Wallace had shut up and let the two argue it out, you would have found President Trump the victor. The fourth point that I want to make here is uh, Nancy and her 25th Amendment that she wants to enact. And that is she doesn't think the president is competent enough to be handling the job of presidency because he's supposedly too ill. He's not. There's nothing wrong with Donald Trump. There's nothing wrong with the president. He's gotten over the corona if he ever had it. I mean, all these Americans, thousands and thousands of Americans get it and they're asymptomatic. So what if Trump is one of those asymptomatic guys? He's a healthy man. For 70, was it, 74 years old, he is a very healthy man. He's as healthy at 74 as I am at 155. So my point is, is that Nancy is going to go nowhere with the 25th Amendment. Let me tell you what this is. All she's doing is trying to offer up another distraction, a distraction from the fact that Biden and his campaign, Biden and his whore that he's campaigning with, has no platform. All they have to offer is communism and Marxism. Notice that on every debate and on every time that he gets up or the whore gets up, all they do is run the Trump administration down. And the reason for that is because they don't want to talk about what they would do. They don't want to talk about their platform because if they talked about their platform, they'd have to read you Karl Marx and Das Kapital. I've got both copies right here in my library in leather bound editions. So if you want to know what the Democratic platform is, then just read Das Kapital by Karl Marx and it will lay it all out there for you. Joe's not going to talk about it. Well, Joe doesn't really know what to talk about at all. He has to be fed. So, did you see the earpiece, by the way, in his, uh, I think it was, it's, I think it was on his right ear. There was an earpiece that was spotted with a microphone right here under his lapel and another cord up here in his sleeve. But Nancy isn't going to be able to go anywhere with his 25th Amendment. You watch and see. It's just a big distraction. So just don't even pay attention to it. And the fifth and final thing that I have to tell you today, exciting news that I'm, I'm more excited about this than I am the Pax Premier game coming out. And that is the fact that the host of all hosts tomorrow or today is going to, and maybe some of you have already seen it, the host of all hosts is going to host for Rush Limbaugh. Donald Trump himself, the champion, 
is going to host the Rush Limbaugh show. I can't imagine that. I, I that that almost makes everything that we've gone through in this entire year, maybe not totally, but perhaps it's made everything worthwhile that we've gone through in the last year to have Donald Trump host the Rush Limbaugh show. Can you think of anything better? I mean, when I when my son Alexander told me this this morning, and he said, you'll never guess who's going to host the show on Rush Limbaugh. And I said, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I have no idea. And he says, Donald Trump. I said, yeah, right. Okay, what else? Because he's always telling me stuff that's not true, but just to get my goat and see what I have to say. But this is fantastic. It's going to be great. It, it, I would say it's going to make the show great again, but the show has always been great. I listen to Rush Limbaugh. I listen to Mark Levin. I listen. I also listen to Coast to Coast. George Norrie is, without a doubt, my nighttime guy that I like to listen to. That everything from the aliens to the ghosts to mainly politics is what I like. Donald Trump doing the Rush Limbaugh show. Can you imagine anything better in life than that? I can't. So that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for joining me on this first episode of the Colonel's Election Morning Report. This is the first one. I plan to do these every day. This is T minus 25. And make sure you go out and you vote for the right guy. Vote for this guy, Donald Trump. This is the Donald. This is the guy that is going to win. This is our champion. Don't vote for this guy. No, no, no. This is Joe. Don't vote for him. No. He. This one is the Marxist. This one right here, he's the greatest president we've had since Reagan, maybe even, I won't say that. Reagan was great. Donald Trump is great for our time. So vote for Donald Trump. Until next time, this is Barbara Strategy on the Colonel's Election Morning Report. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <music>